Today on The Real Story, we're sitting down with Connecticut's party chairs, how state Democrats and Republicans are faring midway through the legislative session. We're talking proposals they're pushing for and priorities ahead of the presidential primary. Plus, as former president and current candidate Donald Trump makes history in criminal court, how will the local parties respond? But first, a one-on-one -on -one with Connecticut's comptroller, Sean Scanlon. He's joining us to talk retirement savings options, the funds needed to get checks in essential workers' hands, if the child tax rebate could be annual, and more. Good morning, and thanks for joining us on The Real Story. I'm Emma Wolforst. Joining us today, we have Comptroller Sean Scanlon. Thank you so much for being here with us. Good morning. Good to be here. Thank you. Well, your job, Comptroller, encompasses lots of different things. So I wanted to start out, for those who don't know or aren't quite sure, what exactly is that position? So I tell people that Comptroller is essentially the chief financial officer of the state. We pay the bills, we do all of the accounting functions, um, but I'm trying to expand the role to make it more uh, everyday accessible to people uh, and break down finances and make our government more understandable to people, which is why I'm out there a lot trying to talk about what I do. CFOs can kind of be a little bit boring. I'm trying to make it a little bit more exciting. So you mentioned money, kind of like a chief financial officer. Um, when you first took office, you posted joking about how people might only know your position and name from the signature on the bottom of state checks. Yeah. Uh, and many of those checks were for essential workers. So you've been asking the legislature for more money to fund the premium pay program. And the Finance Advisory Committee met just this week. What's the future of hero pay in Connecticut right now? Well, just to level set the conversation, when I took office, we had already done all of the work on this. The application deadline was last fall, and the money had already been allocated. Um, so I got the checks expedited. We got them out to about 150,000 people. But there were a few more thousand people that hadn't received their check, or they uh, applied for it a little bit uh, through a different process, through the paper application process. And so um, this week we got $4 million or more funding for that. And next week we will send those checks out to make sure that they get them. At the end of the day, uh, 158,000 frontline workers in Connecticut will get that hero pay bonus. These are grocery store workers, nurses, people that drove Amazon trucks, the people that we rightly called heroes. And I'm really glad that our office was able to get them the checks that they deserved. Absolutely. Um, you talked about uh, that money going towards a couple people who don't have checks yet, about 5,100 workers still waiting for those bonuses, is that correct? Yeah, th some of them made some mis easy mistakes on their application that we asked them to clean up, and then some people did uh, you know, the old school paper application versus online. Um, so we're processing those now, that will go out next week, and then this process, you know, as far as our office is concerned, will be over. Though the legislature is right now looking at expanding this, and if that happens, we'll be ready. Yeah, so that was just passed the, through the House floor this last week. It's, it still needs to go to the Senate, but you brought up that status. How are you feeling about that right now? Well, you know, for me, um, we're, we're still waiting to hear definitively about whether they're going to expand the program. That particular program was about hero pay for the state employees. Um, but this is, if there's another batch one more time for the private sector workers, we're ready to execute on that and get those checks out to folks. Um, and we're going to see. And this has obviously been a big push from your office. With what you've heard from constituents, why do you think it's so important to have these payments continue? Well, these are the people that we rightly all called heroes, right? The people that kept our grocery stores open, the men and women in our ICUs at Hartford Hospital and Yale who literally put on all that PPE and went to work every day during those very scary times in, in early 2020. Um, and we just wanted to make sure we didn't forget about those people because they worked hard and obviously all of us really want to move on and, and forget about COVID, um, but we can't forget about them. And so that's why um, I worked really hard to not only make sure that they got the checks, but got them in a timely manner. Um, one of the reasons we did this today or this week is to make sure that, uh, you know, they actually aren't waiting for three more months to get those checks. Sure. And so, um, you know, for me in my office, it's been a real honor to help these workers get the payment that they deserve because we don't want to forget about them. So other people getting a little bit of a bump. Last year, lawmakers advanced the child tax credit rebate, and the families of 370,000 children here in Connecticut received that support. You've really pushed 
for that to continue, obviously, child costs are still on the rise along with the cost of everything else. So why do you believe this should be policy rather than just one-time help? Well, I push for this because I believe that any sort of thing that we can do to make it more affordable in Connecticut for parents is a good thing, not just for those parents, but for our economy. When people can afford to live here, they can afford to start a family here, they can afford to start a business here. And so when it comes back to it, um, helping incentivize people to stay here by making it more affordable and cutting the taxes of working parents, I think is a really good thing. We also know that it works, right? Um, the federal child tax credit was expanded in 2021 under the American Rescue Plan that President Biden signed. And in six months of extended payments that people got, it literally cut child poverty in half in this country. So um, we know it's good for parents to have a little extra money. We know it's good from a societal perspective to do it. Um, last year, I was able to work very closely with the governor to get that one-time payment where each parent got a $250 check per child up to three kids. And I traveled the state and talked to people about why that mattered. And talking to people, they weren't spending that money on extravagant things. They were paying their rent. They were buying gas at a time that gas was really expensive. They were dealing with inflation. I think that that family support should continue in the state. I think we should continue it and make it permanent. And I'm working with the legislature and the governor to try to do that right now. Great. Well, so you've been very busy traveling across Connecticut, as we said at the start here, and you're working on enrollment for My CT Savings. Can you break down what that program is for us? Yeah, so basically um, half of the workers who work in our state work at a job that they're not offered a retirement plan. And that's not mostly because that retirement plan is something that the business owner doesn't want to offer. They just can't afford to do it. I was raised by a small business owner who would have loved nothing more than to help their employees, but they just couldn't afford to do it. So so what my CD savings does is pretty simple. It basically says to that uh, small business, hey, if you can't afford to do this right now, send us the names of your employees. We will enroll them in a Roth IRA plan, and you don't have to do anything, and you don't have to pay for it. And so um, we just concluded the first retirement plan deadline was March 30th, and we had such an overwhelmingly successful period with over 3,500 Connecticut businesses signing up for it. I've extended the deadline to August 31st, mm -hmm. and we're working and going to spend the summer to make sure that the other half of businesses that we know are eligible that have not yet signed up can think about signing up, and all you have to do is go to mycdsavings.com. It's quick, it's easy, and most importantly, it's free for the small business. And when you're out there talking to people about this as an option, did you find that most people knew that this existed, or was it kind of a surprise to them? So I think it was mostly a surprise. Look, I get it. Small business owners, they're busy. You know, you're running your restaurant, you're running your business, you're, you're doing a million things, and you get a letter in the mail that says My CD Savings, and you don't know what that is. Um, I believe in government, it has to be proactive. A lot of times people say, well, they, people didn't sign up for that. It's their fault. No, I think it's government's fault when they don't do that. And so I've made a conscious effort to hit the road. I have learned how to make a pizza at a pizza place in Hartford. I learned how to make a cupcake in Norris, cupcake in Middletown. I'm trying to get out there, talk to people, let them know about this. And so far, um, people are really, really enjoying being part of this. And it's us helping them help their employees. And you've definitely put in a lot of miles yeah. doing that. But before we get to that, this program, is it being seen as a blueprint for other states? You know, we're doing this here in Connecticut. Have you heard yeah. about anything happening in, in uh, neighboring states or other places across the country? Yeah, so actually, um, we have a lot of support within New England to form a New England collaborative. So I've had conversations with the state treasurers of Rhode Island, Vermont, and Maine about joining together and pooling our assets. They would be separate and separate bank accounts, but when you combine all the assets from all these other states, um, we could lower the fees for our uh, employees and we could save more because we'd be investing more. Uh, and so uh, I had an op-ed in the Providence Journal the other day with the treasurer of Rhode Island, uh, had a conversation recently with the treasurer of Vermont. I think anything we can do on a regional basis to combat a big problem, which is we want to make sure everybody has access to a retirement account. I personally believe that everybody should have access to a safe retirement and a secure retirement if they've worked hard, hard but they need account to save it. Uh, and so if we can give them the tool and they use it, it's great. All right. So throughout all this, going to a lot of places yeah. around the state, as we said, you may have put in the, the highest mileage of any <laughs> local elected official here, and you've made your way around the whole state. One thing you do 
is called comp time. Yeah. In our last couple minutes, tell me a little bit about what that is. Well, first of all, I love Connecticut. I'm from here. I've got two young kids that I'm raising here. My wife went to UConn, right? Like we're invested in Connecticut and I'm doing this job because I really want to help serve our state and I, and I love it. And one of the ways that I learn best is by getting out there and talking to people and seeing people and learning things. And so I do this thing called comp time where as the person who literally signs the paychecks of every state employee, uh, I go out once a month and literally shadow a state employee doing their job. Um, this most recent month I was doing trout stocking in the Naugatuck River and literally running fish from a truck to the river. Um, the month before I literally spent the night in a plow truck on I-91 during a snowstorm and sat there with somebody who you know, was gonna be plowing that road all night long and sometimes people take for granted that that happens and they get up the next morning and they get their kids in the car and they go to work and they go about their life. But what res makes that happen is that somebody's doing a job. Um, and so I highlight that and learn from it and I've been learning a lot. Great. Well, we'll have to keep an eye out to see what sorts of other jobs sure. you get into next. But thank you so much for being with us this morning. Glad to be here. Well, we still have a lot more to come on The Real Story. We're checking in with the chairs of Connecticut's political parties, how the right and the left are finding middle ground on a number of issues this legislative session, what Democrats and Republicans want to see pass, and what legislation they think is lost. Plus, we'll talk about the presidential primary, what voting reform they'd like to see, and their thoughts on former President Trump's arraignment.